Hello and welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called this, you may ask? So I'll tell you. The accepted meaning of angel is messenger and the accepted meaning of destiny is to make firm establish. So my guests and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And also, I like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now, in a moment, I will introduce you to my wonderful guest, Chrissy Estelle. But before that, I would like to say thank you for watching the show live at a later date, as it means a lot to connect with like-minded women. Now, if you've never met me before, then my name is Ray, and I help women to crossroads in their life, heal their past, create their future, transform their present, so they can take on our destiny in the here and now. I've also created a transformational journey to help you take charge of your destiny. Now, each episode of the show will cover various themes on your journey, a mini guide meditation of angel card reading, with the wisdom of my wonderful guests, like today's guest, Christy Astell, who will be imparting her wisdom about how you can shine your true energetic light that will help you with your calling, your passion to be of service to the world and make that your reality. Now, Christy is one of the UK's best loved spiritual educators and angel experts who has written five very successful books, including The Seven Steps into Angel Light. Um, and the creator of the Guardian Angel Oracle Cards and Guided Meditation CDs. Through her writing and teaching, Chrissy's inspirational charisma and exceptional skill as a heart-centered facilitator, God, where are my teeth today? I brought thousands of people into closer relationship with angelic guardians, healing energies and universal love. As well as the popular workshops she offers throughout the UK, Chrissy runs sought after courses in spiritual development and for facilitation, I can never say that word, including a diploma, diploma program for those who wish to develop skills to teach and facilitate spiritual growth in others. She's also created a unique and comprehensive home study course, Educating Heart and Soul. Chrissy is featured on the radio, made numerous television appearances and written features for a wide range of press, including Kindred Spirit, Soul and Soul and Spirit, Watkins Review and The Telegraph. She is the angel columnist for Spirit and Destiny, a trustee celebrant and editor of New Essences Network and a spiritual companions educator and mentor, so busy. She has also voted most popular light worker by Soul and Spirit magazine. So without further ado, hello Chrissy and welcome to the Angels and Destiny show. How are you today? I'm all right. I don't know how you managed to get that lot out. <laughs> <laughs> Neither do I. <laughs> yeah, well, I've just reminded you all about it, with, even with my teeth playing about. No wonder I have to get up at 4 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> so before we get into this fascinating conversation, then whether you're watching live or to record him, then please hit the like love button as I love to watch it um, when hearts and thumbs appear across the screen. And if you're watching this on my YouTube channel, then please give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you can get updates on all recordings. Now, you can also ask questions, leave comments and thoughts, as both Chris and I want you to be part of this conversation, so please do not be shy. We'll try and say hello to everyone who says hello and answer any question or comments live or once the show is finished. So, Chrissy, why don't you tell us more about yourself and then how you can help women shine their true energ energetic mm. light? Well, oh gosh, where to begin? Um, well, I started doing this in 97. So it's 22 years this year that I've been sharing angels, uh, writing books, doing all sorts of, you know, um, educational stuff for myself, uh, as well as guiding people through their, uh, through their, should we say it's not a darkness because lots of people come to angels already mm. knowing that they're there. They already have their guardian angels. They already know that they have some kind of connection. And, and so very often they come to me because they're at a crossroads. They're either looking to change their life or they're seeking their life purpose. Um, and sometimes the answer to that, as you well know, is find what it is that makes your heart sing. And once you find something that really excites you and you love doing with a passion, that is your soul's purpose. Um, so very often the stuff I'm doing is, is bringing people to that place. And I love doing workshops and I love doing talks. Um, and now my latest thing is I really love um, taking people on retreats, 
um, enabling them to have some kind of transformational, uh, uh, some kind of transformational process in their everyday life. So if they come away with me to discover something, very often within that discovery is a self-discovery because they realize um, how their being a light worker is, um, is, is actually shining a light for other people. So that's kind of what I'm doing, really. I, I believe that the whole world is full of inherently good people, really wonderful people, people that have um, a real passion for helping others. And so in whatever capacity you have a desire to help others by doing it with love rather than doing it because it's a nine to five thing and you've got to earn the money, uh, doing it with love is becoming a light worker. And if you're shining a light for other people as a beacon, that's what it's all about. That's that's what I, it's about connection. It's yeah. about reflecting. And it's about how may I serve in whatever way you serve best. Um, now, I did see something that just flashed up. Yes, from, you did. Uh, a gentleman who said he's discovered he's a dark worker. Yes. Um, I'm not sure whether he means he's working in shadow in order to enable others to become enlightened or in what capacity he's he's mentioned that but for me um i go into dark places and i anchor the light so let me just tell you about this amazing trip that some of us have just been on to the cathar country in the language yes you can't get much darker than that this is where people were just like the witch hunts, they were being yeah. burned for their beliefs. They were pacifists. They were true truth seekers. Um, they didn't believe in, in fighting in any way. They just believed in the truth. And for that, they were all burned at the stake. Now, we went there, two groups, one after the other. It turned out, don't know what that was. It turned out that while we were there, um, it was... We learned, we were there on the 21st of March, we arrived on the solstice, we did a beautiful meditation for the solstice, and the very next uh, day, or the day after, well, there we were in Monsigur, bringing down the light into a place where there was true darkness. Um, and it was, we found out that the, it, this all happened around the 20th of March in 1244, and there we were, <laughs> around the same time so many years later as a group bringing in the light and the following week it was my birthday so i was doing it again <laughs> and so, sometimes we don't know why we're in a place we just find yes. ourselves there and we know that we're being guided by the angels and the light don't we it's it's just fantastic mm. fantastic anyway it is. that's yeah. a little bit about what i've been up to and where i am now so, <laughs> so you know Ask away. <laughs> Ex excellent. So, so yes, Andy, if you kind of like want to um, elaborate a little bit more um, what you meant, meant for that. Um, and obviously, we've got a couple of people here that have said hello. Um, we've got Mary Reedy. Hi from uh, Galway in Ireland. That's and, lovely. Hi, Mary. And we we've have... Got Amanda from Cardiff. Nothing. Hello, Amanda yes. from Cardiff. <laughs> we have... And uh, do, 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 let's move that up. And um, I'm guessing Mary was with you because she said that was an amazing trip. She was, and Amanda was with me as well. Ah, excellent. Um, yeah. Oh, that, that's 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 brilliant. So, oh, okay. So Andy's come up. Um, dark work is separate to shadow, to shadow work. The witch trolls are different bases because the dark of, is the feminine energy. The pitch black is just as loving as the wise as the light. Right, Andy, I would say as well to add on to that, that it's within the blackness of fertile soil that the best things grow. So um, there's nothing to be afraid of in, in the blackness. It, I agree, it's a feminine energy, it's a fertility energy. It's certainly not anything to be afraid of. And we've been brought up to believe that, you know, there's fear to be, fear in the darkness and all of that kind of thing. And funnily enough, Andy, I was talking to a great friend of mine today um, who's also found that she's working 
in the darkness, in the darker side. Um, and we've decided that we're going to go and, and maybe take a look at some of the areas where not only were the midwives and, um, you know, the, they, were born, they were burnt as witches, bless their hearts. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and there needs to be so much healing done in these areas. I was, I was living in a village. Uh, we, we recently moved. We're in a, a, a lighter village now. We were in a very dark village before. Um, and I, I discovered that the reason I felt I was so heavy was because right outside my bedroom window and across was a lovely little terrace of cottages that it turns out was Cromwell's soldiers barracks. Uh. So, you know, a lot and very close to Haverhill where a lot of the, where the witch finder general yeah. started and, you know, a dark duck. And, and, and when I grew up in my teens, I lived right close to Pendle Hill, which of course was where yeah. the last cottages were burned. So, you know, I found myself always being drawn to places where where light is needed yes. because I because I am a light worker but Andy I totally get what you're doing and I you know great I'm absolutely fine with that you yeah. know I feel that whatever it is that we are doing in our life as I said earlier whatever we are doing if we're doing it from the heart we're doing it passionately with a view to helping and serving the greater good whether it's to heal the past or to heal the present or to be a bearer of the future and whatever it is to come. And we're doing it because we're doing it from the, the goodness of our heart. We're doing it from the right place, uh, not for personal benefit, not for personal ego, but just because we're here to serve the, the greater. Um, yeah, whatever it is we're here to do, we will find it eventually. Yeah, and if not, we'll come back and do it next time. Exactly. Although I know this is my last time on Earth, so I won't be coming back. Oh, yeah. I'm not so sure I want to come back again. I'm not so sure I want to go all through all through the <laughs> island. Right? Yeah, yeah. I'm. I'm. Yeah, my, mine's mine's not from this life, but mine is all my previous lives. And that. But yeah. So Andy says, yeah, absolutely. It's where the new downloads come. And yeah. um, and that and and it is. You know, as long as it's all it's all done. It's all done from the heart and with the highest good and intention that you know then then anything that helps people on their spiritual journey to not have to come back again is absolutely brilliant yeah i believe in the buddhist philosophy philosophy of harmlessness and mm. if, it's, if it's harmless and it's good and it's coming from the heart with compassion then i think we're doing the right thing yeah 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 i i, I think i think so as well um now we were uh, sort of like we touched on a little bit when I did the um, in introduction um, and that was about the seven steps into angel light. So why seven? Why, why the number seven for seven steps? Ooh, you see, seven is a very mystical, magical number. Um, there's no, no, no coincidences that, you know, seven great oceans, seven great planets, seven days of the week, seven colours of the rainbow, seven rays. 777 seven, seven. it goes on and on and on and on um and because i've been working with seven archangels since i started doing this work um seven archangels are listed by enoch in the old testament it's it's part of the the judaic christian tradition it's not related to, to religion in any way it's related to the heart of spirituality um but i do think that for me the seven is something that's come up time and time again it's my life uh, purpose number as well um it was my father's birthday seven <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so the seven archangels i've been working with uh, another archangel called metatron for a long time and but the seven the seven are uh, the ones that i work with are the ones of the seven rays it's the theosophical seven mm. that i'm working with um not the kabbalistic seven so I just feel that most of them are angels that people have heard of. So Raphael, people know of as the great healer. Michael, they know of as the great protector. Gabriel is the great midwife of the of the cosmos, bringing in birth and rebirthing the soul into the next life. Um, new beginnings, everybody's heard of Gabriel, because of course it's our traditional Christmas story. Yeah. And also Gibril, which was the, you know, 
Mohammed was there stuck in a cave, desperate to know what to do. And Jibril or Gabriel comes along and s supposedly dictates the Quran. So then for me, we have Camuel or Hamuel, uh, who's the great bringer of love and compassion. I work with that energy a lot. That's on the Christ ray. I also work with Uriel, who I believe to be one of the guardians of our planet and the one who calls us to serve. Um, and Jophiel, Jophiel, the enlightened one. So those are the seven that I work with. And I believe, you see, I don't believe that angels are people. I believe that angels are an energy, yeah, a vibration. And so if we if we think about it, if if there is an, a massive vibrational quality that is the quality of protection and strength and power, and the sound of that vibration is Michael or Michael or however you want to pronounce it. That's the sound. That's the vibrational sound. When we tap into that sound, it echoes back to us the magnificent energy of, of that divine quality. And so in that divine quality, we get communication, we get messages, and we get the sense of presence. And for me, that's what we're feeling when we feel an angel present where feel because angel just means messenger as you know yeah and that message can come from any level but what we're aiming for is a, the highest vibrational energy because that then uplifts us and enlightens us if we want to become a medium or a psychic that's also fine if it's helpful to others but it's a different vibration altogether mm -hmm. it's not it's not a light vibration it's not high above the etheric yeah. field of the discarnate being so we have to decide if we go the spiritual path on the seven steps into angel light it takes you on a journey <coughs> excuse me to connect with each of those energies one by one it starts with gabriel and the new beginnings and it carries on and it carries on through all seven until you get to a point where you connect with the energy of the archangel uriel who says, okay, now what? And you say, here I am. I've gone through these steps. I now realize I have much to offer. Use me. How may I serve? And then that chapter looks at all the ways that regardless of where we are, regardless of our social background, our cultural background, our, our status in life, we can do everything in order to serve just by being the best us that we can be so we don't have to be particularly highly educated we don't have to have a highfalutin job we can be a good mum we can be the best person on the till in a supermarket you know we can be we can be the best at what we're doing and shine our light we don't need to do more than find out who we really are. That's that's just the message, really, of, mm. of getting into the angel light, is being an angel, being the messenger, being the one who serves. Yeah, that's what that's about. And, and basically, it's a book version of my Educating Heart and Soul course. So the idea was, let's put the course into a pocket version that people can carry around with them. And at the same time, it's not the same, but it's a potted version of, but with yeah. other interesting little snippets in there as well. And the idea is that hopefully people will read it and then they'll think, actually, I'd like to go deeper into that. I might do the course. Um, and once they've done the course, then I can teach them how to become a, a workshop facilitator themselves, how to facilitate other people's growth. So that's not teaching so much. That's enabling and empowering. Yeah. And it's empowerment, isn't it, Ray? That's what we're at. That's what we're – give people their confidence back. Yeah. Um, help people to, to know that they are – they are unique. They are loved. They are beautiful. They have got a wonderful soul in there. And give them the confidence and show them how to not only bring that out in themselves, but help other people to do the same. That's that's where I'm coming from with my work. Yeah. And, and I think and, you know, that's where I sort of like come from as well. And I think a lot of um, uh, light workers or people 
who are here to serve people. I think that's where we all come from. It's not that we heal or, or we do all the work for you. We give you the confidence, the information for you to actually do that work yourself. So that, Absolutely. that you will clean your path. So, so we'll help you. We'll always be there to guide you. But you go off on the journey on yourself. We're not on that path with you. That's right. That's right. I mean, as you know, you know, in healing, you can heal someone's pain. But if they don't look at the reasons for it and if they don't make steps in their life to change their thought patterns, change their behavior, that illness, that sickness, that disease, whatever it was that we helped to relieve will come back <clears throat> and the universe will keep bringing it back until we get it. And sometimes yeah. the getting it can be a long time. You know, I yeah. mean, we do go round, don't we, in this DNA spiral on the Jacob's Ladder and we keep revisiting from a higher point, hopefully, until we understand that we don't need to suffer that anymore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Karen has said hello and then she's put some question marks. So I think that might be to um, what we were saying and I've got to try and remember to go back now because it's... Oh, and I do apologise to people if I keep fading in and out, only my camera is not working properly today. So I'm all pixelated, but luckily Chrissy is absolutely fine. Um, and she looks absolutely perfect um, on, on, on the thing. So I think, so what was I, what was I saying? Um, we were talking about, what were we talking about? Chrissy, can you remember what we were talking about when I said? Well, I don't know. I mean, when Karen came in and said, hi, maybe she's asking, where are you? Maybe she can't hear you properly or maybe she can't see you properly. I don't know. Or I don't yeah. know if she wants to ask the question. What is it <laughs> yeah. Question? Yeah. Yeah, but I, yeah, Karen. If if you want to uh, type in uh, uh, exactly um, well, what it is, because we've just carried on, and it's just the way the energies are working. Um, <laughs> and there's a please, please do ask. You know, and if anyone else watching this has got questions to ask, then please do say hello and um, ask ask any questions. You know, this is your chance. You know, to ask Chrissy anything really that. That, that that you that you want that that you want to know, or you might have any um, any queries about. So you know, it, yeah, I was just going to say to you, Ray, that um, you you asked me if I had my cards with me, the the mm. uh, guardian angel. These these cards were called Angel Insight ten years ago, and they they've reissued them twice with different names. So some people have got the, the cards, and they are the originals, and then some people have got the the next issue and the, these ones that they've brought out now uh the guardian angel oracle they're in a lovely little drawer and everything very very nice they've just they in fact actually gosh it's a year march last year <laughs> they've got them out. um now i you said to me have i got my cards with me and i mm. took them out of the pack and without even thinking and you know, without doing anything with them. The card that came to the top is the peace card. And, and, and for me, I think that's what we are doing. In our way, I think what we are doing is we are working as channels of peace. So if we can help people to learn how to forgive or, or how to, um, how to, open their hearts and let go of stuff that not only is healing but it's actually I'll show you the card this is the mm. this is the image of the peace card that's beautiful so it's it's an angel it's gone a bit shinier don't know if I can yeah no it's, it's coming through perfectly for, is it? Yeah, yeah yeah I can see it perfectly it's it's, a, it's an angel holding the world with such love and compassion um, and I, I think that that is exactly what we are trying to do. We're trying to, we're trying to bring peace to our beautiful world by creating a little bit of heaven everywhere where mm. we are, so that those people we, we we meet, those people we come across, those people we help, will maybe become a little more peaceful in their lives, and then by them being more peaceful in their lives their own little bit of the world becomes a more peaceful place. And that's the only way that I can see that uh, that we're going to be doing it. And I'm afraid, Karen, you know, just have to re rewind and watch watch the first yeah. part. <laughs> I, 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 I was, I was going to say, um, Andy, you know, if you could um, 
uh, once the show's finished, you could actually um, answer Karen's question. That would be absolutely brilliant um, to do to do that for us, um, so that she's got the answer, and anyone else who um, isn't quite sure will actually have the answer as well. So yeah, and if you could do that, that would be absolutely brilliant for us. Uh, that so, um, how did you? originally get into into angels i mean 94 you you kind 97. of 97 97 so so were you in angels when you were younger or well i i've got a very very varied and interesting life because my father was a healer and a mystic um and my mother has worked with angels all her life my father worked with angels all his life but they they had me and then they went their separate ways and in the 50s, that was an absolute, you know, that was an oh, yeah. you, divorce in the early 50s was, was horrendous. So my mother couldn't work because she was married. Uh, and then, of course, she had the stigma of being a divorcee. So she went back to nursing or she, she trained as a nurse. And, and, and I was brought up by my grandma. So my grandma read tea leaves. She believed in past lives. Uh, she was quite a character. Um, and so... I I didn't really know my mum and dad as much as I would have if I'd been brought up by them. But it was quite extraordinary because I always saw lights around. I always felt a presence. When I was a little girl, I used to think it was Jesus because I was told Jesus loves children. And therefore, if I was frightened, it would be Jesus that comforted me. And I, I was brought up. My, my, great, my grandfather was actually a Methodist minister. So I was brought up with that in the background. Um, and I think, yeah, always, always synchronicities, coincidences. I left home at 17. I went to live in London, you know, where the streets are all paved with gold. Um, yeah, cool. and when you're 17, they are. <laughs> um, I, I, I just feel that they were always there. And whatever situation or nasty situation I got myself into, I, I somehow got out of it unscathed um you know very tricky situations i mean you're, you're talking about a young girl of 17 in 1972 walking the streets in mary quant length mini skirts and long waist length blonde hair and yeah pretty oh you wouldn't let my 17 year old do it now <laughs> <laughs> but um i was always okay and um but anyway, I, I, I was always interested in astrology, numerology. My mother lived in America. She was remarried and, and she was a numerologist. She was a color therapist. Um, she drew angels for people. She drew their guardian angels. Every country she flew over, because what she did, you see, she would take the guidance of the ascended masters and she would travel. The money would always come from somewhere and she would go there and she would anchor the light. She would just sit and meditate until she knew the job was done. And so I didn't really know that then because I was married and I had children and I was running a business with my first husband. It wasn't until I started to feel that I was really unhappy doing the wrong thing in the wrong place um, and that I wasn't fulfilling my purpose. I was not doing what I knew or I didn't know what it was but I wasn't doing what I knew I was here to do and so I had to change everything and I, I, I got divorced and I moved into a tiny little studio in East London and it was in 97 when I started working with angels. I did a healing with angels course in London. I had loads of astrology done, I had all my numerology done, I had tarot cards done, I virtually had all my bumps read and everybody was saying, oh, you're a writer, you're a teacher, you, you need to work with the spiritual side of life. And I just shouted up to the angels and said, if this is true, if this is what I'm to do, then help me, <laughs> please help me. And, you know, everything changed. Everything changed. Ka -chunk, ka -chunk, ka -chunk. You know, when you put dominoes in a long line and you flick one and it goes, ka -chunk, ka -chunk, yeah, that's what happened in my life. That's what happened. I ended up going back to university. I felt guided to the right university. As luck would have it, I got the perfect person to interview me because I'd never done A-levels. 
Um, I'd never done a pre-university, you know, uh, course, mm. uh, but I had uh, done my nursing training. I was an SRN, so that shows you how long ago that was, because they're not called SRNs anymore. Um, I'd done that, so on the basis of, well, you are capable of learning, and you have done a three-year degree course, even though we didn't call it a degree in, in the 70s. Yeah. They took me in at university. So the, the whole thing was, you see, I'd started running angel workshops. I'd had a massive angel experience where an angel came to me physically. Um, and, and, and I just knew that it was about sharing the love of angels with others. So I'd started running workshops. But you know what? In the East End of London, there were so many different, uh, very, very different ethnic groups, cultural groups, religions. In one workshop in London, I may have Sikh, Hindu, Muslim. I may have some kind of Afro-Caribbean religion that I didn't understand. I might have Catholics. I wasn't brought up a Catholic. I may have Protestants. I may have atheists. I may have humanists. Anybody that was interested in angels might have been at that workshop. And I suddenly thought, oh, I might be really seriously offending people because of my ignorance. So that's why I went to university. I did a degree in comparative religion so that I looked at 12 different ways of looking at faith. And um, yeah, I loved it. And then I went on to do a certificate in education for adults so that I knew how to teach adults. And I also did, I went down to Surrey University and I did a postgraduate master's diploma in facilitation and spiritual development so you see it just built on and built on yeah how did I get in how did I get in to do a master's course at Surrey University I hadn't even I didn't even know if I'd got my degree yet because I just bumped into somebody who happened to know somebody who happened to mention you know there's a marvelous course in Surrey you should be <laughs> doing that you know so jumped on a train, went down to Surrey, just happened to see the right person again. The angels led me constantly. The angels led me all the time to the right people in the right moment when I was in the right place to be able to be accepted to do these things. And, um, and yeah, I mean, I wrote today for a blog for the Mind, Body, Spirit Festival in, at Olympia. And <clears throat> Uh, yeah, it's been hard work. You know, this wasn't easy. It was hard work. It was hard work in your mid 40s to do a degree when you don't even know how to write an A level essay. Um, it was very hard work writing. I wrote, I wrote two books and I did my degree at the same time. Wow. I don't know how that happened. I think it happened because I was living on my own. You know? <laughs> yeah. The kids had grown up. I was on my own. It was how would you find the time to do that absolutely it was meant to be because that was my pro uh, purpose that was my purpose and i couldn't do what i needed to do until i'd done those things so the universe threw them all at me at the same time you know yeah so there was a kind of academic book that came out also there was a lovely little easy peasy gift book that came out at the same time and I got the degree so if you go to a marketing course or something they say you have to have written a book you have to have a website I started dating somebody that happened to build websites I didn't I choose do. him for that he just walked into my life. <laughs> I'll build you a website, Chrissy. This was, you know, this was way back. This was in 99, 2000. Yeah, so, so it all happened. By the beginning. Yeah. Oh, absolutely right at the beginning. Absolutely right at the beginning. So all the stuff I've done since is because I did the degree and I got a couple of books out. And then once you've got a couple of books out, then you have you know you've got a little bit of leeway where you can go yeah. to the publisher and say got two books out how about i do another one and the the next one which was gifts from angels that was a dream to do because i thought do you know what i need to put together all the stories that people are telling me at the workshops mm. of how angels have come into their lives and as you know people have had amazing experiences mm. of being standing in the room or feeling someone touching your head when you're feeling sad or just a friend arriving right at the right moment 
prodded by an angel get in touch with that poor woman she's feeling yeah. sad um so this little book gifts from angels is everybody's real life story real life story again divided up into the seven so mm. we've got stories of love stories of healing stories of protection and power lots of stories of lives being saved you know I, it's just an amazing subject i've i've so enjoyed bringing angels into people's lives um, and one of my highlights in the whole world my highlights of the whole 20 years has been going down to sri lanka last year and introducing the concept of guardian angels to people in sri lanka it was so well received and yeah. oh gosh the people were so loving you know sometimes i'll be telling a friend who's like yourself you know who who does this work and i'll say yeah there was you know over 800 people in the room and somebody will say oh god chrissy you must have been exhausted the answer is no, no. because there was so much love in the room I ended up feeling marvelous. You know, people were so pleased that, you know, you go all that way just to talk to them about angels. And, and yeah, I love it. I love my work. I love my work. I love my work because I only meet lovely people. Exactly. And then that's the thing you do find when you start working with, with, with angels and angelic energy and everything. Practically everyone you meet are really really nice people lovely people um yeah, yeah. Um, they're, they're absolutely um yeah it, it it's it's absolutely brilliant um like sita who uh who put on who was saying that she uh loved this and uh then also mentioned uh was meant to be you know yeah. everything all synchronicities uh went to be so Elaine um, is on and she has uh, said, I feel guided to do spiritual work, learning to focus, but it's hard not to lose focus. Yes, it is sometimes. It's, it's hard not to lose focus. It depends on what's going on in your life, doesn't it? I mean, mm. um, yeah, sometimes, um, sometimes we have to cut a few ties with those who are draining us. Sometimes we have to kindly step aside from anyone who's bringing negativity in because it's important for us to be, uh, it, it's hard, it's hard. Mm. People have always got something to say about what you're doing. Um, you know, someone said to me, Elaine, oh, Oh, hello. Haven't seen you for years. So you went off to, uh, to well, last time I saw you, you were heading off to university. How did that go then? Was it successful? And I know what he meant. And mm -hmm. I said, am I riding around in a BMW? No. Am I, have I got loads of money in the bank? No. Am I loved? Yeah. Have I helped loads of people over the years? The answer is yes. So how do you measure success? If you measure success by have I changed people's lives, it has been enormously successful. When somebody writes to you and says, I loved that workshop or I really felt myself changing during that retreat because I began to understand myself. It's very, very satisfying. And if you can focus on only the best, the, the light, the love in life, and if when you get knocks, which you do all the time, yeah, you can say, doesn't matter, how can I do it differently? Because I really need to learn from this. I mustn't do it that way again. Um, yeah, you know, it is hard. When I was writing my first book, it was not my first book, but Gifts from Angels book for Watkins. My father was dying. So I was spending, he was in hospital in Newcastle. I lived in London. I was spending every other day driving to Newcastle, staying a couple of nights, coming back, trying to get on with my book, try, then trying to read through the edits, then on the phone, leaving the hospital, going outside on the phone to the editor. Yes, you can change that. No, don't change that. You'll lose the meaning. Staying in focus with the book then going back in the hospital up the stairs to his bed and being present for my father that was very challenging 
very challenging. And when when Seven Steps was coming out, my my daughter was going through a horrendous uh, family situation, and I had to be present for her and her children and and be there for her, whilst at the same time <laughs> finishing the book, doing all the edits. And I think sometimes the more you're trying your best to do your best spiritual work something happens to try and put your light out and it would have been easy to throw in the sponge and say sorry sorry publishers i can't do this i've got too much going on in my private life but what happened i was woken every morning at about quarter to 4 i picked up my laptop i worked till 9 every morning so that's a good five hours work yeah. and then I got up and then I focused on helping my daughter helping her with the kids doing what I had to do that wasn't all the time of course because she had mm. lots of supportive friends as well yeah. but it was almost as if something was trying to stop me from getting that information out same with gifts from angels something was trying to stop me from finishing that book so you know, was it Elaine? It isn't easy to retain your focus. But if you call on the angels and you you say to them, I'm really struggling here. I need your support. I need some help, please. At least give me the energy that I need to be able to work through this and, and see it to its, to its end. Um, when we ask coming from the best place, when we ask with, with really honest intention for the best not for your own sake but for the best outcome the angels always support you and i could not have had more support than i did it was it was it was fantastic some some mornings i'd wake up i always felt a wide awake i never felt oh no it's four o'clock again okay, the morning. I thought, no i didn't i didn't it was really weird um, and I was writing it through the summer. So, of course, the light was streaming in, yeah. the birds were singing, um, and I was able to cope with that. It was, um, but I'm only saying this. This isn't something I talk about. I don't talk about how hard it can be. I usually talk about lovely stuff, but she said, it's hard to focus. Yes, there you go, yeah. Elaine. Don't give up, my darling. Don't give up because. Just allow yourself space and do it carefully and nurture yourself during it. Um, I, I, you know, I understand the necessity to look after yourself because you know that, you know, it's like this, the, the teaching is if your pot is empty, what have you got to share? So from time to time, you have to do the stuff that really nurtures you. Um, whether it's walking the dog in nature or whether it's playing with kids, um, I mean, I, I find playing with my grandchildren really <laughs> nurturing. I love that. And, and because I live in the country, you see, too. Yeah. So I'm able to just uh, watch the sunset. And I did that just before. We, we tuned in, didn't we? And I said, I just rushed off and get myself ready. But from my bathroom window, I was able to watch the sun go down. It oh, was very nice. Lovely. Yeah, those are the things that help you focus, aren't they? They they are mo most most definitely um, yeah and even if you kind of like don't live in in the country you know we're quite lucky in here in, in in England that you know we do have lots of little parks and there are trees growing about so you know even if you just open your window and look at a tree and just take in the energy of the tree that's another way of sort of yeah. bringing you back to focus and yeah and yeah. being there. Um, Elaine, also, there's been a lot of. Uh, I don't know if you. I don't know if you know me. I don't know if you know my work, but I have a blog on chrissyastell.com, and I often write about the energies of the cosmos affecting us. So the more mm -hmm. sensitive you become at the full moons or the new moons mm -hmm. when the planets are in retrograde or whatever's happening, you don't even need to understand the astronomy or the astrology but you can feel it. You become more and more susceptible. And when all the planets are going all over the place, we sensitives, we can become incredibly worn out by it all. And 
we've got all this Brexit stuff going on. Oh, we've got I all know. The stuff, all the stuff on the third, the third dimensional plane that we've got bombarding us constantly. Yeah. We've got negative news coming at us from the TV and our internet all the time. We've got other people's tiredness because people love to tell you they're not well or you know yeah. because because you're a smiling person because you're a light worker because you're a sensitive you're a spiritual person everybody wants to tell you about how how miserable their life is although having said that they're usually lovely people and you want to support them anyway yeah and you you just want to give them a big hug and say look it's fine don't worry about it <laughs> you'll be all right exactly everyone will be all right you know i you know i do future life progression been into the future, I can tell you, it's all fine. Don't, you know, don't, don't worry about it. But then I, I, I don't know if you're the same, but I don't, I don't watch the news. I don't read newspapers. Um, when I go onto my emails, I don't really pay attention to any of the new stuff that, that's going on because I'm not interested in all the negative stuff that's going on. I'm only interested in the positive stuff. Um, so, you see, you know, that's, that's enough. That's another way, Elaine, is, Take yourself away from all the news. Yeah, give yourself a break from time to time. Uh, we have to be, we have to be, um, we have to be responsible. Mm. We have to know which way to vote, and we have to be responsible because we have a. I feel anyway that we we do have um, a responsibility to choose the right people to run this third dimensional world that we're living in. Mm. Um, but at the same time, we mustn't allow ourselves to be drawn into it. Uh, it's important. This is the most important thing that's happened mm. to us in our lifetime because we haven't lived through a war. No. But um, not in our country anyway. But yeah. um, so it's very important that they get it right. But I only dip in and out. I dip in and yeah. out. Where are we up to? What's happening now? Okay, it's the same as it was last week. Right, dip out again. Um, yeah. I let my husband follow it and then I just ask him what's going on <laughs> because he's so sweet and supportive to me that he 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 tries to give me the good stuff because yeah. he, he thinks that you know it's pretty tough and uh, and yeah I think I think for all of those lovely people out there who aspire to work with angels if you're not working with them already just call them in and make sure that you are centered that you are grounded, your feet are on the ground, you take good deep breaths, you call in the angels and there are exercises you can do to cleanse the top chakras so that you know that you're releasing all the negatives that are hiding in your mind, hiding in your memories or that they've become hardened areas in your heart. And so there are exercises that you can do to cleanse the top chakras so that when you do receive messages, you know that you're hearing them right. And then, you know, there are a lot of people who say, how do you know that these messages are coming from angels and not demons or not negative people messing around with your head? Um, you ask them. You ask them. You ask them three yeah. times. If you're unsure, you say, are you coming to me? from the light or are you coming to me from the highest possible source of all love and goodness and you ask them firmly uh, you can ask them three times and there is some some kind of universal law that 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 normally they will just step backwards but i would also say if you are beginning on your path always surround yourself in a bubble of light do a regular protection of some kind um, I think it's really important. I'm sure mm. you agree, Ray. Yeah, uh, you yeah I, I do develop, my own. Yeah, you have to develop a way of uh, making sure that... Uh, I have a favourite little exercise that I teach people, and I say, if you haven't got your own protection exercise, then just imagine every morning when you step out of bed that you are stepping into a ready-made hula hoop made from light, and yeah. you just reach down and pull it up you know a kind of beam me up scotty kind yeah. of imagery um or you call in archangel michael as we're talking about angels call in your guardians to stand to either side of you and call archangel michael to protect you years ago i can remember 
about 20 odd years ago. I can remember 20 years ago. I can remember going to something that Diana Cooper was teaching and I was just learning then. I said, no, it would be, it would have been uh, the millennium thing. Yeah. I think she and I remember her saying, you know, put yourself in a, in a call, put the shield of Michael around you. And that was what was being taught then. Put yourself in a shield, put a blue cloak around you. But I now know that if you put a blue cloak around you, you become invisible. Yeah. If you want to become invisible, that's fine. But if you want to shine your light, if you want your light to radiate in the world, put a beautiful light circle around yourself because a shield is sometimes yes. necessary if you're going into a confrontation, some kind of battle, you need a shield before you and a shield behind you and a shield above you and a shield below you. But if you, it's just an ordinary day, you just need light protection. Otherwise, it's a bit heavy carrying all these shields. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, my, my, my thing is when I um, literally when I unlock my front door in the morning, I literally see if imagine a 100 percent pure crystal shell around me transmuting negativity into positivity. Yeah. Uh, because again it was all those years ago you know it's like you need to do this protect yourself you know send the send the energy back but it's kind of no actually if the energy i want going back i want it to be positive energy so if my little bubble transmute or my, my shell transmutes that into positive energy and sends it back as positive energy so much better yeah absolutely absolutely um another lovely little thing is you can call upon the angels to bless a head so whatever's going to be your day, you can bless ahead. So you bless the journey. You send the angels ahead to bless the journey so that you have a good journey. You bless all the people that come towards you during the day so that each of them will be positive and bringing only light and love. And you bless yourself that you may handle every situation with love during the day. Um, and, yeah, I, I don't remember to do that every day. But when I do do it, do you know what? The day is so much better and everything works according to universal plan. Um, and when I forget, I, I, I realise and I think, ah, yep, that's why things are challenging today. I completely yeah. forgot to bless the day. Because um, we do, you know, um, I think it was, was it you, Elaine, that said sometimes you lose focus? Yeah, you know what? Sometimes all of us do. None of us has got it 100% perfect, have we? It's, we're all work in progress. Um, I know I certainly am work in progress. Um, yes. Yeah. We just, I, we just do it right. We just try, don't we? We just do it. We, we didn't, we weren't born with instructions no. uh, in front of us. We have to learn by our mistakes and ask the angels to show us the right path. Ask the yeah. angels to show us. Would you like me to take a card? And I, 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 I was going to say, yes, um, why don't you do a card for us all? That'll be absolutely brilliant. I'm not going to look at them then. No. Nope. It's so hard. It's so easy to choose one. But that peace card, look, that was right at the top when I took them out mm. of there. Lovely. lovely uh, I keep my cards in a in a lovely little velvet bag with stars oh, that's pretty. yeah okay i'm gonna take this one i'm not sure what it is aha it's the card perfect of, yeah it's the card of knowledge aha okay. so this is it's a message from archangel Raphael. in in my pack there are four suits michael gabriel uriel and Raphael. all the Raphael cards are healing cards so this message of knowledge is saying look here is this beautiful tree this this tree of life tree filled with knowledge and wisdom the angel is sitting at the base of the tree the symbolism there is that trees know <laughs> they know stuff oh they um, do indeed <laughs> And, and here's this beautiful, mature tree ready to share, impart its knowledge. But the message that the angel has here, you see scrolls and books, and he's clearly studying something. So this is just saying, as you seek knowledge, 
don't allow yourself to try and remember everything. But take from everything you're learning, take through, take from everything you're reading or studying, take from it that which you know fills you with light. So the things that excite you, the things that you could, oh yes, I'll remember that because I really know that, I understand that. Take from it only the things that enlighten you, that make you feel light. Anything that feels dreary or heavy doesn't suit your vibration. So the message from this card is it is healing, it is replenishing, it serves you best if you take from all the stuff only that which fills you with light. So that's that message. So Brilliant. actually, actually I, I just, I think that's a lovely bit to end on, do you? That, that is an absolutely perfect card to, to end on. I think that's absolutely brilliant. So thank you for, thank you for that. Um, and see, Sita says, uh, this is amazing. I have to do some research for what I want to do. Thank you. There and you that, go. And, and she's on an absolutely brilliant journey at the moment. Um, she was on my show uh, uh, at the beginning, um, and she, I'm going to have her back in after she's done a marathon or a 10K run, something like that. Wow. Um, so, <laughs> so, yeah, it's like she's an inspiration um, herself. Yeah, that is inspirational. With, with, that is inspirational. So I hope everyone that you've enjoyed this and found it insightful. And the words of wisdom Chrissy has given you, and help you further on your journey. So Chris, if people want to get um, in touch with you, how do they do that? Yep, they can find me on Facebook. I've got two uh, Facebook pages, one for friends and one for likes and shares, please. Uh, Chrissy Astell. I've also got my chrissyastell.com blog page. I've got uh, the website, which is Angel Light dot co dot uk and on the angel light website it there's a link to all the other stuff that i do so i would love to see you on my twitter i would love to see you on my facebook um please you know leave me a comment or come and say hi um it'd be lovely to meet you there yeah and what i'll do is once the show's finished i'll actually put those our own website details um on the comments so you'll actually be, be able to um, so people can actually connect and you know Chrissy and I'll still be going through these comments um you know for the next couple of days so even if you haven't caught this live and you're watching the replay and you've got any insights or queries or anything then please yeah. you know do comment and, and we'll we'll answer them and Absolutely. and get back to them, to them to you so um thank you everyone so much for watching this and I'd like you to share this video as I'm sure there are more women who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny like you do and if you need help finding your destiny and getting clear on your path, then I would love to be that guide for you. So reach out and connect with me as I would love to book a free 20 to 30 minute session via Skype or Messenger with you. So we can have a quick chat so we can find out more about each other and how I can help you on your journey. And by the way, I will see you next Wednesday, the 17th of April at 8 p.m. I'll be having a conversation with my guest, Jane Lee Miller, who has helped many women over the years is very connected to angels. Two weeks in a row, somebody with angels is brilliant and has to do <laughs> insights relating to Atlantis. So everyone, I will see you then. And Chrissy, thank you so much for being on. Yeah, thank and you. Hopefully you'll come back in the future and we can have I'd a conversation because this is brilliant. Yeah, let's. <laughs> okay, so thank you everyone for okay. watching and bye -bye. I'll see you all next week. Bye. Bye-bye everyone. Bye-bye.